भूर्भुव स्वह तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्य धीमहे धियो यो न प्रचोदया नमस्ते टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी व्हाट इज इंटेलिजेंस एंड एस्पेशली इंटेलिजेंस अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंडियन स्पिरिचुअल ट्रेडिशन इन द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड इंटेलिजेंस इज अंडरस्टूड एज अ मल्टी डायमेंशनल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ आर बुद्धि of our intellect and what are the different dimensions i think uh, uh, those of you who are familiar with the philosophy of mind are well familiar with the different dimensions of human intelligence the first is naturalist intelligence the intelligence that comes from nature the second is musical intelligence the talent in music is a sign of musical intelligence then you have the logical analytical mathematical in, uh, intelligence so a high iq is a sign of that then you have what is called and this is something new what is called existential intelligence which means where your sq spiritual quotient is very high you have deep sensitivity to the existential questions of life existential means regarding my own existence not regarding any object or the existence of others but the fundamental questions about our own existence this is called existential intelligence then you have interpersonal intelligence which means a high aq uh, gives you interpersonal intelligence how exactly you interact with others and your level of emotional quotient and then you have bodily or kinesthetic intelligence which means how you can uh, regulate and handle your body that determines your kinesthetic intelligence then you have linguistic intelligence which means your ability to learn language is very high and then you have intrapersonal intelligence which means you are how you are able to handle your own self and then you have spatial intelligence uh, it is related to kinesthetic intelligence where uh, you are able to balance your body perfectly very well so gymnastics have a very uh, great spatial intelligence um now these are all the different types of intelligences which uh, modern science recognizes but here we are going to especially pay attention to what is called existential intelligence and why it is rare and also how uh, far back in history it has been mentioned in fact most scriptures will speak to you about this form of intelligence it is the intelligence which makes you ask fundamental questions about your life what is the nature of my existence who am i these are all existential questions why does my mind function the way it does what is the nature of the self am i the awareness or the mind or the body these are all existential questions what is the real nature of this world which i see around me what is the nature of supreme intelligence this all this falls under existential intelligence now now what the scriptures tell us especially you will find this in the upanishads is that this level of intelligence finding answers to these questions is the one of the highest forms of intelligence today it is measured by spiritual quotient it is the quotient which gives your mind great depth and ability to transcend itself in search of self knowledge so what is the nature of this kind of mind the nature of mind is you know the mind according to the upanishads is lit by consciousness standing behind the mind the atman or what you call the soul that is a unit of pure consciousness and due to the its if effulgence due to the light of awareness it exudes it lights up the mind and makes the mind conscious so the clearer the mind is the purer it is the more it will become aware more conscious and this is spirituality so the mind as it were perfectly reflects what is behind it as a result you get knowledge of the self so the ability of the mind to reflect awareness pure awareness is called existential intelligence usually the mind which is completely untrained impure will deflect awareness or it will you know bypass awareness or it will block awareness altogether the tamasic mind will do that but a very sattvic cultured spiritual mind which is capable of existential inquiry 
will become so transparent and pure it filters or allows the light of consciousness through it and as a result it sparkles and because it can reflect that light that the level of intelligence or awareness of that mind is very high so you see intelligence is not equated with memory in the indian spiritual heritage it is not how much you know it is how much you are capable of knowing how much you are able to reflect or become deeply aware how much awareness your mind can reflect it can it gives steadiness to your intellect it actually gives memory and it gives pragnya most of all self awareness deep inner awareness and not awareness of an object it is awareness of pure being so this keeps the mind very clear pure happy and because happiness you know it is an exponential function of your awareness the more aware the mind becomes the happier it will become naturally so this kind of mind does not require an object to keep it happy it is happy by itself because it is it has this capacity to reflect the light of pure consciousness so this is considered real intelligence what are its signs the sign of such a mind is it is bubbling with joy by itself because it is deeply aware and it has understood the connection between awareness and happiness such a mind also has pragnya constant self awareness if awareness is compromised in body consciousness intelligence decreases yes but if one keeps things where they belong then at once this intelligence will peak so immediately uh, when you are when you give the right place to the body and mind in your life this intelligence will peak existential intelligence so a mind which is full of awareness pure awareness is always bubbling with joy it is bubbling with self awareness and it is bubbling with what is called uh, medha and dhi which which means it is deeply self aware content within itself and um uh, it has medha a superior kind of intelligence and retention memory due to which it is able to focus on the essentials it develops deep focus and retain the essential it ha- it develops these capacities so all these higher capacities of the mind smriti medha dhriti kshama dhi buddhi uh, pragnya all this belongs to the mind which is truly spiritually cultured it has existential intelligence it has developed existential intelligence as a result it develops all these faculties the prayer i chanted in the beginning the gayatri mantra is a prayer for this level of intelligence if this intelligence is there every other intelligence will find place there do you know the spiritual quotient is the quotient which makes place for intelligence quotient um sp- uh, this emotional quotient volitional quotient even the adversity quotient it makes place for all this everything you can face properly everything you have already because the intelligence has become so stable within it can handle everything properly proportionately committedly so this is the highest form of intelligence according to um, indian scriptures you will see i will quote to you from the bhagavad gita what the nature of the sattvic intelligence is the bhagavad gita says lord krishna says there pravrittim cha nivrittim cha karya karye bhaya bhaye bandham moksham cha yaveti buddhi sa partha sattviki that buddhi or intelligence is considered sattvic which is able to clearly make the difference between right action and improper action between duty and non duty between what is to be feared and what is not to be feared between what is binding and what is liberating see the deep sense of proportion inner balance and discrimination we make philosophical discrimination has come into that mind because of its inner steadiness and what is the nature of the rajasik buddhi the buddhi which filters very little awareness what is its nature yaya dharmam adharmam cha karya karya karyam cha karyam eva cha ayathavat prajarati buddhi sa partha rajasi 
that intellect is considered uh, to be rajasik which is in the mode of passion and hence gets confused between righteousness and unrighteousness and cannot distinguish between right and wrong also why because it is it lacks vivek because it is able to filter out very little awareness it is jaded in a sense confused and as a result it is not able to make this clear vivek and action follows thought isn't it according to your vivek will be your action so this is the nature of the rajasik buddhi and the nature of the tamasik buddhi also is spelled out in the bhagavad gita what is its nature that buddhi which is bhrashta which is absolutely corrupt because very little light of awareness is filtering out through that intellect so its nature is adharmam dharmam itiya manyate tamasavrita sarvarthan viparitanscha buddhi sapartha tamasi so that intellect is shrouded in darkness or tamasik which imagines <laughs> what does it imagine sarva uh, dharmam is adharmam and adharma is dharma what is righteous conduct it sees as unrighteous what is unrighteous conduct it sees as righteous characteristic examples are there duryodhan even mother kaike in the ramayan at one point she suffered that um she could not see what is righteous conduct in a particular context so and sarvarthan viparintanscha they see everything in a opposite deluded manner they perceive truth to be untruth untruth to be truth right to be wrong wrong to be right everything is opposite so this kind of buddhi is stained with tamas and this intellect is of very poor capacity and it will not give you any form of right decision or happiness because you know action follows thought so when the thought itself is like this the action will naturally be wrong and as a result a person suffers so you see your capacity to make the right decision depends upon the clarity of your intellect which depends upon the amount of purity the existential uh, intelligence has acquired to be able to become deeply conscious filter out more awareness so that when it is deeply aware it is balanced stable and takes the right decision if this is not there a person will remain confused or go ahead and take the wrong decision and suffer as a consequence so this is a very important insight into the nature of intelligence in indian spiritual heritage don't confuse intelligence with memory if memory was intelligence your laptop is more intelligent than you our mobile phone phones would be more intelligent than us because they have a greater memory it is not retention capacity is just one faculty you develop as a result of high awareness but awareness is what contributes to intelligence understanding this we must know where to invest in the education process and how we should direct the scope and pace of our learning process our education we must know what to focus upon and how the intellect is to be made satvik pure that should be the essential purpose of education in the modern society there is nothing along these lines to train our students and that is why all the prevalent confusion in the lives of students if we can focus even a little on this and create theories of consciousness and cognition and intelligence based on this spiritual heritage i think that would work wonders for our young people and this is the uh, i would say knowledge the whole world is asking for om shanti shanti shanti